It's about to get complicated. I've been drawing these plans and I've been looking very closely at this reel. This is a Mitchell Advocate. I want it to be about this size. There are some size constraints I'm gonna have to deal with. It's too complicated. I just don't know what to say right now. I just gotta get started and explain as I go, you know? I'm just gonna explain as I go. Making a fishing reel, by the way. <laughs> a spinner with the oscillating spool and the bail clicks open, clicks shut, drag system on the top. For the first time, I'm gonna try breaking up this fishing reel into multiple videos too. I think it's appropriate. Never made a fishing reel before, so this is probably going to be a learning experience for me and I might make mistakes and stuff, so I'm gonna break this up into multiple videos and not pretend it's a super easygoing, smooth project. This is gonna be crazy. Let's get to it. Sorry about my disgusting fingernails. I've been sharpening knives. I got a bunch of black metal knife dust in there. This was a piece of hickory. That's what all of the wood on this fishing reel is gonna be made out of. And if you're wondering what this piece is, it's gonna be the thing that holds a 5 8 inch bearing so the bale can spin on it. I don't wanna just hold on to that with my fingers, you know? So that'll be a really tight fit. I need it to be. I don't know, I probably, I'm probably gonna serrate and scuff up the edge of this bearing. That way I can epoxy this in here and it'll stay. That's already pretty tight though. Just so this makes more sense, this part is gonna be the top of the crankcase and it's going to be attached to the main shaft that spins the bale on this reel. And it's gonna, I need something that's fixed to the, to the case here for that to happen. So now I'm gonna file some edges on the outside of this bearing. I take that back. That's hardened steel, duh. I'm gonna grind some edges on the outside of this bearing. So now I'm gonna have to be careful not to get any glue on the bearing or inside of the bearing. Just keep it on the outside so this is glued in but can still rotate. Okay, that should do it. So I'm cutting out these really thin strips of hickory because the next step is gonna to be to actually make the gear case or the crank case or whatever you wanna call it for this fishing reel. And how I'm gonna do that is with um, putting these strips of hickory in boiling water and then forming them around a mold and then gluing them all together that way. And that'll be the outside of the case. And then I'm actually gonna use some clear Lexan polycarbonate as the side plates 
so you can see the gears and stuff on the inside. At least that's the plan. So I'll cut this out and this will be my form or mold or whatever you want to call it. The thing that I bend the strips around to get the right shape. So just to keep this simple, I think I'm gonna just have these soak in water for a long time and then try to shape them around this. It'd be a lot simpler if I didn't need to involve boiling water in this. So I'll come back in a while, see if this works. Okay, it's the next day. Let's see if these will bend. Well, they are bendy. Not sure how long I need to let this sit and dry. I think I'll just come back every couple hours or so and see if it has taken shape. I don't think it's gonna like entirely take the shape perfectly of the outside of this form, but when I glue it, it will. The glue will hold it there. That went pretty smooth. So while that stuff's drying, we can get to work on some other stuff. We're gonna get this spool cut out. Well, I guess I gotta wait for that to dry too. Uh, what else could I do? All right, this has been drying for a couple of hours. See if it's taken form. Well, it's a lot better than straight pieces. So next I just need to put some glue between each of these layers and put it back how it was. And then it should stay. I think I'm just gonna use an excess amount of glue on one side of each of these pieces. Well, three of these pieces is all you need. That way I don't have to put glue on both sides because I don't even know how I'd do that right now. It'd be a mess. Just like that. This is still going to be a mess, but... There. Okay. See if that stays. I think it will. I think I just got a good idea. Instead of waiting for the water to soak into those hickory strips, I could just put it in the vacuum chamber and suck all the air out and then just water will be left, you know? Go too far. Had some crackage on the last piece there. There's a little bit over here too. Hmm. I might have to do this again and use a thinner piece. The overall thickness of these three pieces are thicker than what I need. So just the outside layer cracked of this last piece, so I still might be able to use this. We'll see once this dries. That was the bottom of the bale, by the way, the part that spins around the spool. So it needs to be pretty strong. I might have to redo that whole thing right there. We'll see. Man, hickory is a hard wood. 
So we got the chunk of wood that's going to be the spool all chucked up in the lathe. Now we're just gonna uh, cut it to size. I'm using the drawings that I did to just take some calipers, get the measurements I need, and measure as I go. There's quite a few cuts I need to be aware of. There's a taper right here, there's a big square cut right here. Um, well, I guess there's only a few, never mind. Shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> So next I need to make a really thin cut to start the taper right here. I'm just going to cut in right here with this really thin chisel. I might mark out how tall I want the spool or the part that holds the line on the spool to be. And then I just got to cut that taper, round off this edge, and cut that material out. I think this is going to be the bottom of this spool. This piece of material is uh, taller than the spool needs to be. So I'm just going to mark out this edge up here. That edge is already right there. Then mark out the part that holds the line and we should be good. So that little line that I just scored right there is how tall the spool is gonna be. So I'm gonna shove this chisel in how deep it needs to go. First I should measure. So that's how deep the chisel needs to go. I'll just keep cutting until this is flush. Oh, by the way, uh, these chisels were sent to me by another YouTuber, Nathan Kane. His channel uh, is All the Hobbies on YouTube here. He's got a Facebook, Instagram. I'll put all the links in the description where you can see his work. He's done some videos on how to make these chisels. These are 01 tool steel. Uh, they're working really good for this application. I think that's what uh, wood lathe tools usually are, a tool steel. Made a cool little stand for him so you can see what edges you're getting. Thank you, Nathan. You got a pretty cool name too. N-A-I-T-H-A-N. I've never seen it spelled like that. Mine's N-A-T-H-A-N. Let's get back to work. All right, we're there. So I think to do the taper on this, I'm just gonna shove this thing in at about that angle until I get to the edge on this side. I don't know if this is even gonna cut like this, but eh. I need to think of something smarter than that. Okay, I'm gonna shove this thing in there at this angle. Had to get that out of the way. Okay, I think that's the right angle. Totally just eyeballing this right now. I think that's good. All right, need to mark out where the line is going to be held now. So first I'm just going to measure from the bottom. And then mark the top. Measuring from the bottom again. Between those two lines I need to cut a groove that is that deep, nice and flat. So I think this is the tool you use for something like that. We'll see. I might be wrong. Seemed like it would be. What's the cutting edge on this then? It's just like a squared off triangle edge. I thought it was this. I'm not liking that, it's not cutting very well. Maybe it just needs to be sharper. Got hot. So, so far that's where we're at. I just gotta cut that uh, spool a little deeper and then I'm gonna make some lines in there that help hold the line on there a little better. And then the lathe work for the spool is pretty much done. That's the spool. Well, still quite a bit left to do, but that's pretty much the spool. 
So now I just need to drill a really big hole right up from the bottom into the spool. And by really big, I mean one and a quarter inch. A one and a quarter inch hole into hickory is pretty serious. That hickory wasn't easy to carve on the lathe either. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to just hold on to this. One sec, gotta think of something. All right, I'm just gonna clamp this extremely tight. So I can just hold on to this clamp instead. Wish me luck. I need to make sure I know how deep I'm going. Okay, I got it. I need to clamp down lower too. That way the pressure is on solid wood and not uh, just a thin circle of wood. Once I, once I drill that wood out, you know. Just like a millimeter and a half less than the thickness of that, so that's easy. Okay, so now the top needs a hole too. I think the top hole is going to be a little bit smaller than the bottom hole. Yeah, the top one's 7 8 inch, and it's going to be super shallow. Should be able to just hold on to it. There. Last thing to do is just drill a 1 8 inch hole straight through the middle of this. Perfect. Lined up super straight. So there will be more work to do on this spool. I gotta recess some spots on it and add some washers or some sort of material that would be really good to rub against as a drag, you know? Because the drag knob will tighten down and it's gonna have to squeeze something together. It squeezes the spool right here. It makes it harder for it to spin. So I gotta figure out what they use for that. I don't even know, graphite, something like that. I don't know, what's a good drag material? But, I, but first I need to know exactly what I'm using. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna use for that and what diameter it is gonna be. So I gotta leave the spool as it is for now and move on to something else. All right, it's had plenty of time. So we're gonna release these clamps. We're gonna see if it stays. That looks good. It's kept the bend right there. This is being a little stubborn. There we go. There. It did. Nice laminated piece of curved hickory. So that's where that goes. I've also glued up the bale here and it's been sitting for plenty long. And it stayed too. It's good to know that works. I wasn't completely certain that it would. Got a lot of cleaning up to do on this bale. There's some cracking on the edges. But I think I can just sand that off. This is a lot thicker, this corner, than it needs to be. So I'll just sand all that down to where it's a solid piece. So, that's where all those pieces go. That's a pretty good start. We definitely have yet to delve into the nitty gritty on this reel. Like I'm gonna be making, I think, uh, aluminum gears. I don't think, I can't find a good source where I can just pick up locally here of uh, one, eighth, one eighth inch thick sheets of brass. So I think I'm gonna have to use aluminum for this reel. I have never made metal gears let alone gears that require a 45 degree angle on the teeth to mesh because I'm gonna come up from the main crankshaft, it's gonna come over and it's gonna spin the bale and then it's gonna come down and it's gonna have a gear that drives the mechanism to oscillate the spool up and down as the bale spins. So yeah, it's gonna get a lot more complicated. <laughs> but I think I've thought of it all, I think I have it down to where this is gonna work. And if I have to rethink anything, it's not a problem, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll get this to work, I think. But that's all for this video. So, on to the next uh, step, steps for this fishing reel.